All right, everyone. So it is now 10.05. Um, I wanted to kick this meeting off. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, cool. Yes. Very good. Thanks, Karen. So, uh, well, good morning, all. Uh, my name is Patrick Boyle. I am the Executive Director of Ignite LI. Ignite LI is the Manufacturing uh, Trade Association or Consortium of Long Island. We get to represent all 11 industries of manufacturing that exist here on Long Island, be it aerospace and defense, to pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, to uh, biotech, and all out on the east end, we have all the farming and the breweries and the winemaking as well. So there's a great diverse set of products uh, that are made here on Long Island. There's a wonderful, uh, diverse sector of people making those products. I have the honor of going up to uh, Albany and down to DC and talking with uh, Suffolk County electeds about the needs of manufacturing here on Long Island. And in having those conversations, I get to meet people like Karen who uh, work around the globe in building up uh, supply chains and obviously supply chains are crucial for us. So I wanted to start this meeting by showing you a quick agenda. I uh, want to introduce our sponsors. We're gonna have our Global Victoria presentation followed by a quick Q&A. Uh, then I'm gonna discuss uh, some uh, projects that we're working on here at Ignite LI. So we have apprenticeship program for manufacturing. Uh, MACNI, the Manufacturing Association of Central New York, is uh, has partnered with us to bring crucial training to our manufacturers. And then we have a vaccination sign-on letter that I want to talk about at the end. So let's jump over to our sponsors. Okay, chief among them today, ALA North America. And we have Tony here on the call. Um, Tony, I don't know if you wanted to say anything, but I'm going to give you a quick brief. And if you want to just say hello and talk a little bit about what you guys do, I'd be happy um, to. We're, we're happy to be sponsored. We, we, ALA North America is the North American Division of Advanced Logistics for Aerospace. Our main headquarters is in Italy, Naples. We have a presence uh, around the globe, uh, primarily in Israel, uh, the UK, uh, Germany, uh, France, and of course, North America in addition to, of course, all the warehouses in Italy. We're a stocking distributor. We support commercial and military concerns, uh, be it the manufacturing side, the distribution side, or the end user side. Whatever you need in terms of keeping your product in the air, you call ALA and we'll take care of it. Wonderful. Thank you, Tony. Okay, we also have industrial coverage. I believe Alex Sarkin is on the call with us. And we have the Cradle of Aviation uh, out in um, Uniondale. Uh, Andy Pardon just jumped on the call. Hey, Andy. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? You want to talk real quick? Sure. Um, the Cradle is very happy to be a part of this. Um, obviously, we, uh, we have three missions, uh, preserving Long Island's rich aerospace history, um, a lot of educational programs, but uh, one of the things we try to do is expose kids to careers in aerospace uh, through a lot of workforce development programs. So we're happy to be a part of this and to kind of show the future of aerospace being a, more of a global thing than just uh, domestic. Wonderful. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for, for doing what you're doing and thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, I want to take a moment to also thank the Ignite LI board members. Um, these individuals really set the direction of uh, our trade association and they give me the guidance and the uh, industry insight as to what's going on on the shop floor. So that way I can have uh, better advocacy when I go again, like up to, like I said, up to Albany down to DC and talk with our elected officials. So. Our board president, Ann Shabunko Moore, is on the call with us. Good morning, Ann. We have Emma Lee from ANZ Pharmaceutical, Mitchell Reckler from Reckler Equity Partners, Anthony Acampora from Silverman Acampora, Phil Coniglio from Hofstra University, Jordan Finkelstein from Exergy LLC, and Michael Daddario from Daddario. And I always have to say this Long Island is the home of 70% of the world's guitar strings. We make them here on Long Island. Um, 
I think this is something that we need to be shouting from uh, the top of mountains. Uh, I think it's really neat that we get to do that here. So with that said, those are our board members. And I am now going to turn it over to uh, Karen to give us a presentation on the uh, trade mission that they're setting up with American A&D companies to build a supply chain for uh, Victoria, the state of uh, the Australian state of Victoria. Karen, would you mind? Uh, I think I have to stop my screen share. That way you can go ahead and do yours. How's that? Yeah, let me just... Everyone see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Karen Lochran. I'm Director of Defense and Aerospace for the State of Victoria, uh, posted in Washington, DC. It's a very robust state uh, for trade and investment, and especially in defense and aerospace. We have 24 offices around the world, including a nice team and a group in New York. And uh, our state is only about 3% of the land mass, but we carry about 30% plus, depending on which politician is quoting this statistic, of the gross domestic product for Australia. So today I'm gonna give you a snapshot of Australian defense, what we're doing, how you do it, and also talk about a defense and trade mission that we're conducting virtually in May, matching up our suppliers to US suppliers. So I'm not sure you're surprised to hear that Australian defense is committed to spending $270 billion in defense over the next 10 years. Wow. But, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty significant. Uh, and we're most grateful for our allies in the US, especially for the 2,500 US Marines who are post posted in our Northern Territory. Uh, Australia has uh, a major threat from our Northern neighbors and we're most grateful. In fact, historically, Australia has been uh, a very close ally to the United States for over a hundred years and followed you into every conflict. So thank you for being our best mates. Before we get started, I'm gonna answer the one question I get asked all the time, is when I land, will I be able to see a kangaroo? <laughs> I will assure you that if, unless you wanna accompany me to a zoo and I'm many really happy to take you to a sanctuary, that is not gonna happen. The other thing that visitors are very surprised about Australia is the size. Our land mass is almost about 82% of the United States with a very small population, about 24 and a half million people today. Let's go into the next decade of Australia spending in the defense sector. Uh, it's a pretty easy um, transition to work with Australia. Uh, for the, if you're a US entity, uh, we have very strong ties, including we have a free trade agreement. And uh, there's a lot of love. Uh oh, Karen, it looks like we lost you there. Karen, I'm gonna give you another minute or so to jump on. In the meantime, I am going to jump over to my presentation and give you some time to uh, log back on, Karen. Okay. Okay, so while Karen is logging back on, I just want to brief the Ignite LI membership uh, specifically those in aerospace and defense about a uh, program that we have built in conjunction with New York State's Department of Labor as well as uh, SUNY uh, to bring a registered apprenticeship program to manufacturers here on the island. We saw uh, through many conversations uh, across all industries uh, here on Long Island, that there was one common denominator issue that everybody was facing, and that is, of course, uh, skilled workforce and a talent pipeline. 
So the registered apprenticeship program has been set up through uh, Suffolk County Community College to bring uh, manufacturing employees, those employees that are already working in manufacturing, uh, crucial training uh, through New York State Department of Labor uh, so that they can earn while they learn and build up those critical skills that we're missing on the shop floor. It helps manufacturers build uh, talent pipelines and it's going to help retain those employees that uh, otherwise uh, might maybe go somewhere else in the world to, to work in manufacturing. So we want to ensure that you have a tool to attract and retain that skilled workforce. And I think that this registered apprenticeship program is gonna do it. Uh, if you are interested, please give me a call or shoot me an email, uh, patrick.boyle at igniteli.org and uh, we'll get the ball rolling for you because this is really a, a wonderful program. There's lots of other places in the country that are doing this really, really well. Um, we saw there was a need and we're very happy to bring it to our membership. So similar to, uh, to the apprenticeship program, uh, MACNI, the Manufacturing Association of Central New York, has partnered with us to bring us um, virtual classes. And, and you can see the list down here. I'm not going to read them all off to you, but these range from morning briefings to day-long technical workshops to multi-day uh, certification programs. This program offers more to Long Island manufacturers than I think what we had uh, previously. And certainly this is definitely the most robust uh, improvement that Ignite Ally has made to our training program. So I just wanted to uh, let all of you know this. So if you have any ideas on classes that we should be adding, please let me know. If you have a specific need, um, I'm, I bet you there's 10 other manufacturers across the region that also have that specific need. So let's talk about the training that you need and how we can help build out those programs. But in the meantime, we have, I think, 10 classes here that you can utilize tomorrow. So we're very happy to bring that. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, so, and if you have any questions, please submit them to the chat. That way I can read them at the end and uh, we don't interrupt anybody. Um, so next here we have a uh, press release I'm putting together for New York State calling for New York State to include essential manufacturing in the next round of uh, vaccination distribution eligibility. So what we have here is essential manufacturing has not been included in any of the, uh, oh, hold on, I got someone jumping on the call here. So we have essential manufacturing that has not been included in the eligibility for uh, the vaccine, unless your employees are, I think, 65 and older, um, they can't get the vaccine. But the nature of manufacturing requires that our employees come into one central location. So we need to ensure that New York State recognizes this uh, oversight and fixes it in the next round of vaccination eligibility. Uh, this is an example of the, or it's a snippet of the press release that I put together. I'd love to include your company and your signature on this press release before I send it out to the governor's office. So if you're interested in doing that, please let me know. Again, my email address is patrick.boyle at igniteli.org. Hey, Patrick. This is hey, Jamie. Jamie. Um, Karen is dialing back in, but uh, I think you're going to need to share the screen from yours to do her presentation. I think that knocked her out. Ah, okay. Very good. Thanks, Jamie. Yep. I will. So I'll stop here then. This is a good stopping point. And let's see. Okay. So we're admitting Karen back in. Hi, Karen. Oh, Karen, I, you're. I think you as soon as I. As soon as I started sharing the screen, you lost me. Ah, okay. So, um, so I think that the we last heard from you. the The last slide that we heard was um, about Australia's size. 
Yes. So can you, do you want to just, you, you uh, manipulate the screen? Cause obviously that's the problem. Ah, uh, okay. Very good. So then I will. Cause to me, as I was sharing the screen, it looked fine. Roger that. So I will then share your presentation. Okay. So I was talking to myself. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, here we are. Thank you. Of course. Okay, so can you can you see this? I can. Okay, and I think that we were last on the landmass. Yes, can slide. your viewers see and hear okay? Jamie, can you see it? Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, yep. um, people are surprised at the size of Australia. It's quite large. It's about 82% our land mass to the size of the United States. And um, we're very grateful for the 2,500 US Marines we have stationed in our Northern Territory who help keep our border secure, especially our Northern border. Next slide. Yes. Uh, Australia has very strong ties with the US trade-wise. In fact, we have a long-standing trade agreement. Uh, in addition, uh, we consider you a very close trading partner. In fact, you're the third largest trading partner. But because of our proximity to Asia, you can imagine that uh, one and two are Asian entities. Uh, but let's see how it all pans out after we recover from COVID. Let's talk a little bit about our future acquisitions. Defence spending in Australia will be the largest since the conflict of the Vietnam War in the 60s and the early 70s. And a good point of reference to look at if you have time and desire is the 2020 Defence Strategic Update accompanied by the 2024 Structure Plan. That outlines all our future procurements and acquisitions for the next decade. And I'm happy to provide a PDF copy if you don't want to go out into the public domain and acquire a copy for yourself. Here's how we uh, procure from Australia for our defence sector. The good news is 60% of Australia's 10-year defence acquisition and modernisation will be sourced from the United States, mostly through foreign military sales, but also direct commercial sales and uh, the acquisition program is, is uh, in place and uh, Australia is ready to do these acquisitions. And currently we do do acquisitions. We buy a lot of our kit from the United States. We're gonna move on to talk a bit about Victoria and its uh, defense and uh, you should just launch the video. The next slide sure. after, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just click that on, that's right. Thank you. Oh, this one. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Tell you this will give you a little overview of our of the Victorian defense.
Thanks, Joe. There is audio for the um, for the video, but who knows? <laughs> okay, Victoria enjoys about fifty percent of the de defence contracts. Uh, that's all the defence procurement in Australia, and it's facilitated through our Capability Acquisition and Sustainment Group. And we have close to seventy percent of the Joint Strike Fighter work. Let's talk a little bit about our upcoming virtual trade mission. Typically, we do these missions in person, and uh, there's a large interest in bringing uh, Australian and Victorian defence suppliers into the US, and a large interest for the United States to come down to Australia. But in lieu of that, we've been doing virtual missions, and our next one will be a very focused, targeted, business-to-business You'll get an overview of the Australian defence industry and uh, we'll manage the platform, the breakout rooms, set up the meeting sessions. It'll be like-minded people, small to medium enterprises from uh, Victoria, Australia. And uh, that will take place on the 5th and 6th of May, local US daylight time. The other thing we do in Australia is we do three defence shows, air, land and sea. And uh, those shows have been put on hold or moved forward during COVID. And the next one will be, um, Patrick, do you mind moving the slide? Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. The next show will be one through three June. Now, this show will, will be going on in person, probably one of the first ones since the COVID epidemic. Uh, however, it'll be mostly domestic in Australia. During COVID, Australia closed uh, their domestic borders and also their international borders. The international borders were due to open the 17th of March, but it's been moved forward to the 17th of June. So uh, that leads us to the next show that will take place in November, which is the largest air show in the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian International Air Show will uh, go ahead. We're cautiously optimistic that we will be able to um, host guests like yourselves to that air show. Uh, in addition to that, we also do a maritime show, which has been moved out to, the, to 2022. So air, land and sea are covered, space piggybacks onto the air show, and the maritime show will um, move out until next year. So the next slide is some useful links of information, including how to uh, look at procurement in Australia. There's a link where you can register as a supplier and be pinged if something comes in that's desirable in your sector. There's also Defence Connect, which is an, a no-cost daily newsletter, and many other uh, useful links that might be helpful that are embedded in the presentation for you to have a look to educate yourself a little bit more about defense. And uh, my contact de details are in the presentation. Apologies for the technical difficulties, lack of sharing, but um, you now have a friend you can phone if you have any questions about the mission, about the defense sector in Australia, and specifically about our great state of Victoria, I'm more than happy to make myself available. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Karen. And thank you for Pleasure. thank you for adapting to uh, our technical difficulties. Um, no, I, I enjoy talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, okay, very good. So I saw that there were a couple upcoming trade shows, um, and certainly I think that there's going to be a lot of interest in um, folks coming out to either participate virtually or. or God willing, in person soon. Um, so yeah, again, we just want to thank you very much for uh, for your time you spent sure. with us. I will be sending uh, for everybody on the call. Uh, I'll send you this recording as well as all of these useful links um, and uh, and Karen's contact information as well. 
Cool. Well, with that, Karen, I think uh, I think we're good to go. Thank you so much for again for for joining us this morning. Yeah, no worries. By the way, the links are embedded into the um, that slide, so you may not have to go in individually. They should be able to link directly from the presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. And if there's no questions or additional information, please reach out. I'm happy to uh, make myself available. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Um, let me just make sure that I haven't missed any other questions. Yep, we're good. Okay. All right. All have right. a good meeting. Thanks. Thank you. So I got through a little bit of my presentation, but I'm just going to finish it up here and then we'll get everybody back to work. So like I was saying, we have uh, this, uh, this press release I'm putting out to the governor's office um, in regards to ensuring that essential manufacturing is included on the next wave of vaccination eligibility. I think obviously power in numbers, um, it would, would be very powerful for all of us to include our names on this. If you have any questions about it, again, please contact me, patrick.boyle at igniteli.org. A piece of legislation that came out this week that I wanted to make everybody aware of since we're all on the call is paid sick leave for vaccinations. So of your employees that are eligible for the vaccine, uh, Andrew Cuomo has signed the legislation Friday authorizing four paid hours of leave per vaccine uh, for all New York State public and private employees. So essentially it could be up to, <clears throat> excuse me, eight hours of paid sick leave for your employees to uh, get the vaccine because it, it fits the two, uh, two doses. Um, the bill amends New York labor law requiring all private employees to provide their employees with a, like I said, sufficient period of time for up to eight, uh, four hours of paid leave. The leave is four hours per injection, meaning employees who get two doses could be up to eight hours. Uh, the leave cannot be charged against any other leave to which the employee is entitled, including the recently enacted paid sick leave. The entire period of leave must be provided at the employer's employee's regular rate of pay. The bill forbids any employer from uh, discriminating against, retaliating against, or interfering with any employee exercising their rights under this new law. So uh, that's certainly going to affect many of us on this call. Um, I don't know if it made its way down to you yet, but if not, Here's your, uh, here's your notification. Um, skipping over now to our next slide. Each of the Ignite LI councils is going to be building out an executive committee to help me understand what is going on on the shop floor. Um, industry insight to set the direction of the A&D council, which then sets the direction of my legislative outreach. Uh, this committee will then be made up of executive level representatives from across Long Island's A and D community. And like I said, the, the premise is to help bridge the gap between the shop floor and government and education. So if you're interested in joining this executive committee, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to get you on a call and uh, we'll discuss how we're going to move this committee forward. A couple grants came out uh, about a week or so ago from Fuse Hub. Um, Fuse Hub has rolled out four new grants designed specifically for manufacturers. For more information, please contact Mr. Jamie Moore, who's on the call with us today. Jamie is our grant guru, and he uh, is um, excellent in understanding how grants can impact your business as well as which grants to apply for. And that's it for us. So I just wanted to thank again our sponsors, uh, ALA North America, Industrial Coverage, Cradle of Aviation, and Karen, of course, from uh, Global Victoria for joining us and uh, bearing with the technical difficulties. I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. Um, and please stay tuned for any new updates, any of my updates from our legislative advocacy and our future upcoming events. With that, I want to thank you again for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Take care, everyone.